All right, welcome, welcome, everyone. This podcast is in alpha and maybe subject to change. Joining me today is is Tef because because Zolt bailed on us last I mean, moment. No. Very he sad. Did. He bailed on us last moment. Mm. Not a team player. Not a team player at all. We, no synergy. No, just an alcohol problem. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> pretty much. We were wrong. Like, he was too well for the podcast, and he was like, "Oh, I'm six cans deep." <laughs> <laughs> Only got off work, you know, a couple of hours ago. Went to the shop, got a couple. Of, yeah, he's downed them all. You know, he's just having a good time. Apparently, so here we are. <laughs> but yeah, just us. Just us today. Not even Ziff. I've not seen Ziff in a while, but we'll see. Maybe we'll have him on next week. Who knows? Yeah. But yeah. Shall we get right into it? Shall we, should we talk about the video games that we have done played this week? Let's do that. Let's do that. What have you been playing? Well, um... <laughs> I've not really played a lot, personally. I've played Among Us. Played a lot of I've Among played Among Us. Oh, have you played Among Us as well, Tef? I haven't played a lot of Among Us. Oh. Mostly a few. So you have. <laughs> Interesting. But yeah, we've we've played a lot of Among Us. I think we've put like ten hours in now or something. Something like that. We've put a lot of hours yeah, in. I believe that. I've got thirteen actually. Okay, Steam's yeah, maybe open. maybe we got more than that. Hold on, I can. <laughs> my Steam's still open as well. Let me check. I have twelve point five. Oh, you got more than me. Mm-hmm. I've played a few games of that. You believe it or not. I am actually in the Among Us server as well on Discord. <laughs> How could Just you like play without me? How could you do this? It doesn't feel the same without you. It's, not as fun. it's genuinely not as funny when you're not there. Just because you're I a little mean... shit. <laughs> we did have some uh, some moments off stream that were just too funny. <laughs> like, I wish we, we had we them. Just... There's like those two days where like you were too ill to stream. We just played Among Us instead and just some quality moments that the world's missed out on. Mm, but dark blue, dark blue on keys. I'm always gonna remember. Dark blue, always sauce. We just tethered every dark blue that came came in that game. Pretty much, like three dark blues in a row. We just voted out right away. Like I'm Hopefully not, I'm not even around. sure anyone died before I voted dark blue on that round either. <laughs> it was a round where I was just <laughs> like, okay, it's dark blue. <sighs> just run right down. <laughs> so, I've, I've called this meeting here today. <laughs> oh, so funny. So we've got to tell the story. We've got to. So we we figured out uh, that on on the third map uh, on Polis, um, we we realised pretty quickly. I think someone actually told us um, in in the, in one of the meetings um, that a common task is keys, which is right there in the ship where you start, um, and it's a common task that everyone's got. So you can tell who's an imposter um, if if people like don't go there straight away. You know, if so, someone runs off in the wrong direction, you can tell that they're an imposter and they're not. They've not yeah. seen that task, have it? Um, and we had the reverse of that situation where we all ran out of the ship except one person ran two keys. Yeah, <laughs> it was immediately really obvious. So he sat and went straight to the button with with a set plan points, which I, I think was just perfect. <laughs> it, it, I went there, I hit the button, I was like, "Hello, everyone. I've called this meeting here today to ask." One person, a, a simple question. And then two people immediately voted after that as well. I think they voted me. I was like, hold on, hold on. Give me a moment, please. Dark Blue. You went, hold your votes, please. Yeah. Dark Blue. What tasks have you done? I did keys. <laughs> immediately, I was just like... <laughs> and I was immediately like, all right, boys, you know what to do. You gotta learn today, boy. <laughs> yeah. People vote. <laughs> Oh, it was such a good so time. Good. Oh, clearly he wasn't aware that it's a common task. No, it's always fun oh. when you catch someone with that, though. It's so good, so funny. But yeah, um, I don't know. I've not played the mobile version, so I don't know if like they struggle more with it on mobile. I assume you do. It's got obviously going to be a better experience on PC. I've, in some senses, I don't like moving about, especially. I feel like would be. Harder on mobile. I just don't do well with touch screen though. I'm just like, mm. I'm I'm a, a boomer, as the internet says. So, don't I, don't, do well I with think that. it would probably be quite easy. It's it's one of the few games that I think would probably control well on mobile, but there's not many of them. I don't. I can't 
see it being too different. But uh, I think having your fingers all over the screen would make it very hard to keep track of people, though. That's one thing. Mm. It makes yeah. the whole social function harder, actually. I actually, you know what? I actually recently did get dragged into a mobile game by someone. So I've been playing, I played a little bit of that. It's called like Dragalia Lost. So it's like a gacha game. So I've been playing a bit of that and I just, I feel like an absolute boomer playing any game on mobile because I'm like, I've got my phone. I'm like. <laughs> you got to do that boomer thing where you, like, you hold the phone really far away and go. I I am like that, and I've got to like I've got to have my finger like I've got to be like that swiping along and stuff because in that game you've got to tap to attack you got to sp and it's like you go through a little dungeon you got to walk them through you got to like drag your thing to be like hey go over here then you got to like slide real quick to be able to do a dodge roll and I'm like I don't know what's going on I don't, I can't even see where I'm attacking half the time I'm just smacking the screen <laughs> look that luckily like luckily you can set it to auto so. uh... So I've I, I was like auto farm and stuff and that and yeah I've got I got a little bit into that. As it, it turns out mobile games they have a lot of uh, a lot of little dopamine hits that they throw at you to just be like hey that's how they feel, get you. Feel pretty good about that, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> how about you have some free heroes as well? Here you go. Go go do one of those little free hero things. Oh oh it looks like you're all out. Well I mean you could use some of that currency you've been earning. Through the uh, the adventure game. I mean, you could also save that for other stuff, I guess, if you wanted to. Or maybe you could just purchase our premium currency and get as many summons as you want. It's like, ooh, ooh, I'm I'm a I'm I'm, I'm gonna put that down. <laughs> You've just made me realise. You know all those like old nineties drug PSAs, which were spread in that like auto lie that drug dealers will give you like free drugs in order to hook you in, and then you'll like come back and pay for the drugs. That like which didn't happen, but that is exactly what mobile games yeah. do today. Why are there PSAs about that? Because they make really a lot of lives. money and it's legal tender. <laughs> well, like drug dealers, I guess. Okay, I mean, hey, gacha games. Any game with anime girls apparently like makes a lot of money. But we'll talk about that later. <laughs> we will. We will. Indeed, we will. But yeah, it's um, it, I think it was like a, it's actually a Nintendo published mobile game. It's by like Psy Games, but it's like published by Nintendo. So I was like, okay, I'll I'll give it a go. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of anime girls in it and stuff. So I was like, you know, I'll give it a go. Right up your street then. Yeah, right, right up my alley. Because <laughs> I'm lost to the girls. They're the only ones that will love me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got a bit Zoltask in here. Oof. It, it, it did. <laughs> Hold on, I don't have like You're a bottle to in, swig. Yeah, no. just call in. No, call into the chat. <laughs> just like, did someone mention sadness? Did someone mention depression? Hello, that is me. Hello, yes, I am Spain with LPS. <laughs> he has a lot of those now. Home alone. Without the home. <laughs> he's, re he's really, you know, just... He, he found out that we liked... Cologne, but the Seal Island, and he's like, he's kept going, he's not stopping now. <laughs> now he's just, he's manufacturing them now, he's a machine. Uh, so, so have you played anything else at all? Well, I, uh, I've been playing more Dying and Romper, there's been that, I, uh, what? Yeah, I, don't <laughs> I don't, I don't remember what I spoke, what case did I speak about last week? You said you were on a third case last time. Oh. Oh yeah, I solved the third case. I've done that one. As and uh, it turns out, it was exactly who I guessed. <laughs> oh, okay, smart. Oh, sure, it was. I mean, I did say Celeste last week, so. Yeah, you. Are. I mean, I don't actually remember like which case was which now, sir. It's I don't really the... remember the cases all that well in general, honestly. It's the case with with Taka, Fumi, and Celeste in being in heavily involved. I do remember that one. Yep. Yeah, and I the, remember that one though. The switching. Yeah, it, it tries, to, it it tries try... to trick you into thinking it's one person when it's dead. When like, it, I don't know. It, try... it can't be because they push you that too far, or like everyone assumes it's one person. If I remember correctly, I'm trying to. I've got... mm, I'm trying to remember. Frame. No, that's I've... the second case. I think. No, not sure. That's the Still second case where it's uh, you know, Ed uh, Edgeworth, but not as cool. Like, actually goes up oh, and tampers yeah, with the crime scene. 
for no, for no reason. He's just like, I'm just gonna do this for fun. Oh, he just like he just fucks things up for no good reason. That's all. Mm. He's so everything. Yeah. I'll be honest though. I I've started to like him. I'm just like, you know what? You're you're terrible, a terrible person, but I can respect that. <laughs> he, he, he is weirdly lovable. He's actually um sort of become like a weird series mascot somehow, because he seems to be really popular. And yeah, he he shows up in some form or another in like every game. Uh, that's oh. not a spoiler. That doesn't necessarily mean he dies. I'm not saying that his character always appears, but they find a way to shove him into every game in some way or another because he's so weirdly popular. Yeah, I um, I mean, I don't even know how they are gonna have two other games because the the plot that they've like been pushing, I feel like for the whole game is that the outside world is now an apocalypse or something. Mm. It's like a post-apocalypse, and they've all been trapped in here for I don't know to like maybe bring together the best peop- minds to maybe go out into the world and, you know, restart. I feel like that's m- maybe what it was. That's what it what it seems to be pushing, but then, you know, they've got the whole weird mastermind situation, and I don't know how that plays in as well. But I don't even know if that's actually what the situation is, because I, I, at first I thought it was like, maybe, maybe this is just Big Brother, but, f- you know, more enjoyable to watch. <laughs> But uh, who knows? Yeah, I'm still not there yet. I've just started the fourth case. I actually just got to the court with it, so I've done the investigation. The fourth case involves uh, your your girl, Tef. Kerry Gary. No, Sakura. Sakura. <laughs> I don't remember which one she is. Uh, big muscle. Muscle, muscle girl. Oh, okay. Yeah. She is not my girl. She's my <laughs> man, but I wouldn't say that's her face. <laughs> okay, yeah, may- maybe not. But uh, yeah, that um, that's the one involving her. So right now, my sus, I, <laughs> it like it immediately is like, hey, to- Toko is a uh, pretty sus, right? She's she's a murderer, you know. So it's everyone did it. Everyone her. did it all at the same time. But. For some reason, I'm sus of Hina, even though they were really good friends. I'm just like, Hina seems really sus. Um, I genuinely can't remember who did it. Um, that 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 is the case that I was thinking of, actually. The rec um, room? I, I, yeah, that's the one that when you when you met someone at the last case, that's the one I was thinking of. I, I see, I, I, the names are all like mm. messed up in my head because they were different for me. Plus, it's been so long anyway that I'm kind of hazy on the names. I remember the characters. Um themselves but i don't necessarily always remember their names yeah so it's weird because it it puts toko's name in the book and it's like okay it's immediately not her like there's no there's no way they do that again that's what i was thinking of yeah 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 yeah. um they 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 set it up to be someone and you know it can't be them yeah and then for some like there's the person that was hiding in the locker the whole time and it's like there's fingerprints on there and they're like oh look at these fingerprints when there's clearly like a face print at the very top as well but no one investigates that no one looks really close to that and i'm like that's definitely a face right there and it could be it could be anyone but uh weirdly it seems like even though hina is like really good friends she seems the most sus out of everyone Also, Sakura died with a smile, so I feel like she was okay with what happened. <laughs> this is fine. This is fine. But, uh, yeah, because they, they also, like, have a whole situation where two people get called in, or, like, they're supposed to get called in. And also, they set up Hero in that one as well, but Hero is, like, too dumb to do any, and I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure he has no intelligence whatsoever. But then again, maybe oh, he's been playing the oh, long they con. Want you to think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Because, like, at one point he drops a piece of evidence. He's like, oh, there's a sweet rapper that only two people have or s- are supposed to have. Looks like he's the killer, guys. He looks pretty sus mm-hmm. there. But it's like, maybe that's just Hina framing him. Because he's just really easy to frame. Because people just keep framing him over and over. <laughs> 
I feel like that. Well, it's it's like that in the mongas, isn't it? If you, someone who's like so blatantly dodgy, they're they're an easy target to frame. Yeah. So I don't know because this is probably the only case where I'm like I'm not one hundred percent sure what's happened before. I went in. Clearly, a protein shake was poisoned. Someone was waiting in the locker and then bashed her over the head. That seems like the obvious thing right away, but I don't know if that's completely true. I feel like there's something I'm missing there. There's also the whole locked door situation, which leads me to believe the only person who could have locked the door was probably Sakura after she was murdered. Or after she was poisoned and then bashed over the head. So, so it'll be interesting to um to listen to next week. Listen yeah. back. Just I'll, edit this into the um into the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'll um I don't know. I'm I'm still like I maybe maybe I need to like reanalyze the situation because Kerry Gary's like super sus as well. She's been sus for a while, and then I also upset her because there was it gives you a choice at one point where it's like, hey, you can give her this information or ke- or hold it from her. And I was like. You know what? You've been pretty sus lately. And apparent <laughs> apparently um something happens to her. Like Monokuma does something to her. But they don't say what, which seems really weird and I'm like, "Okay, well I'm a uh, you're really sus. I'm going to I'm going to withhold information from from you." And then when she finds out you withhold information from you, she gets really mad at you and just won't talk to you. <laughs> But then Monokuma tells everyone anyway the next day. It's that there's, there's a spy because there's a spy among the group, and you you find out who it is. And then Monokuma's like, "Oh, by the way, this is the spy." Like a day later, anyway, so it doesn't matter, and you just upset her for no reason. <laughs> it's like cool. Uh, one of those classic. You think you have a choice situations. Yeah, I feel like I feel like much wouldn't have changed if I actually told her. But hey, who knows? Maybe that's a big effect on the ending. I don't know if there's multiple endings. Um, no, there isn't. I didn't make the would be. <laughs> Did you say the mad victim? Oh, I'm reading chat now. Sorry, <laughs> I was instinct. Don't do it. Don't speak to them. No, but like, I I do think the the mad victim was the one who locked the door <laughs> instead of the murderer and let the murderer yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out next week. Tune in next week, and uh, I'll talk more about my Danganronpa adventures, because who knows? Who knows what happened? I've also realized we've not had this below. But, uh, yeah. Tut, tut. Uh, Tef, how about yourself? Have you been playing anything else? Anything fun? Uh, I feel like I, I've been playing other games, and I just can't think of what they are now, but I'm... Um... I have been playing um, Silent Hill 2 because I play that like every October. Um, it's just, it's 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 October season. You've got to play Silent Hill. Um, so I've Fair been enough. playing through that. I'm just under halfway through, like I'm at the hospital. Um, at, like the, the boss in the hospital, which is like halfway through the hospital. So nearly at the halfway point of the game, really. It's so short, especially when you know what you're doing, you can really blaster it. And it's in like absolute classic, all time classic. Um, if you haven't played it, you, you just should. It's just one of mm-hmm. it's like it is. It's like a, an actual genuine work of art that game. And it's in terms of like gameplay, right? It's not like aged very well. And the combat makes me want to die. I genuinely play it on easy, just because the combat just drives me insane. It's just not worth dealing with. And I don't think it's not really the point of it anyway. Um, yeah, it's so more really, like, the mind. tension and the puzzles. Yeah, yeah, and the combat is just there, I think, because they felt that it needed to be, and they put mm. no effort into it. And it's it's got this really annoying thing where um, when you attack, if you're if you've got a melee weapon, um, there's like three different types of attacks that he can do, and it's totally random. There's no way to control them, um, and only one of them will hit someone who's on the ground. So if you're like if you've just got a melee weapon and you you hit a monster and they fall down onto the ground, you can't slam down on the ground to kill them. Um, like That is an animation that James will do sometimes, but you just can't control when he's going to do it. It's oh. so frustrating. If you've, got, if you've got a gun, you can, like, he'll automatically point it at the floor and shoot, and that's fine. But like early on, especially when you don't have a gun, it's so irritating. Yeah. It's just not fun. I've watched you play through Sam Hill a couple of times, I think. Because I think we've uh, been yeah. on, like, a Skype call, actually, and you've, like, 
shared your screen or something. Could you do that on Skype? You, yeah, yeah, I think you we could. did do that way back in the day. We did do yeah. that once. And then so you, you, you also, uh, you did a Let's Play of it once. Oh man, bad times. That was a long time ago. But I, did, and I screamed like a little girl. The game used to, the game still scared me back then because I didn't know it as well. Mm. Um, and it, it was one of the car would always get you. I feel like both yeah, times, yeah. both times I watched you play, the one of the car would always get you. You'd be like, oh. To be fair, that does still get me because I can never remember exactly where it is. Um. <laughs> like I remember, I remember part of the game it happens in, but I, like it's when you're like heading through the town for the first time. But I never remember what streets it happens in. It just still gets me. It's, it's yeah, certain, I've got a rough it's, idea it's, where it is. I mean, I can think, I can remember now, but that's because it happened like a couple of days ago. But I'm sure <laughs> I'll forget. But next time I play it, it is, it is one of those games where because the sound design is so spot on, like it's fantastic. And the horrible, creepy music that, that it has always gets me. And a lot of the jump scares get me, even though I know that they're coming, just because the noise is yeah. so horrible, the way they're designed. Like, um, I, I absolutely shit myself, <laughs> again, for like a millionth time. Uh, the first time you see Pyramid Head, because oh, you're, yeah. like, you're walking down a corridor in, in the, the first level, which is like an apartment block. You're in the apartment, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you get to like this sort of T-junction, and... um. As you're walking along, it suddenly stops you, and you hear like a, a woman scream. And it it sounds so stereotypical when I say it like that, but something about the way it's done, how she sounds, it doesn't quite sound human. It sounds somewhere in like somewhere between a woman screaming and a cat screaming. It doesn't quite sound right, um, and it gets me every time, even though I know it's coming. It mm -hmm. always makes me jump, and it's the same with the the. Um, toilet scare because that's like a, a weird trope in Silent Hill where in every game you'll go into um, a public bathroom and one of the cubicles will give you a jump scare of some kind. Um, it happens in Silent Hill 1 I think when you go up to the cubicle and in Silent Hill 2 they fuck with you a little bit by having nothing happen when you when you go up to the cubicle and open the door there's nothing there. Um, and no sorry it's like the, it's, it's shut actually um, and I think you can knock on it Oh, it's so hard to remember because they've they've done so many variations on it. I don't want to get them mm. mixed up. I, I think, feel like horror games have taken it. that a lot as well. You see a lot of oh, horror yeah. games do that now. Oh yeah, yeah. There are loads of games that do it anyway. Loads and loads of horror yeah. games. It's, it's. I can think of a couple off the top of my head which which do use the, the exact same idea. Um, but Silent Hill especially always does it. Mm. Um, I think like there's a there's a door which is locked. I think you can knock on it and someone will knock back and that's it. But then as you um, walk away and you, you get back to the door to leave, there's this horrible scream. It sounds like someone slipped off the bowl and smacked their head on the bowl. <laughs> I like, like it, it just, it, you know, it, again, on, again, on paper, it sounds stupid, but like the sound that it makes is horrible. And that always gets me, even though I, I know that's coming. And then if you leave the room and come back, um, door is unlocked and there's just blood all over the cubicle. It's really cool. Good scare. Um, I can corpse party also does um a, a very similar scare in a bathroom like that yeah i i know if i can i can make a few horror games that have stuff like that i feel like games in general love bathrooms and stalls they love having something in a stall you know you go along yeah. and it's just zombie games especially you know a zombie just pops out one of the stalls or something yeah, definitely. There's an um, there's there's a bathroom in Spencer Mansion in Resident Evil One, which um, I think it's it's really it's really nice, uh, because because of what they've done with it. Like in the original game, uh, there's nothing in that bathroom. I think you can get some ammo in there, maybe a key item. I don't think so though. I literally think there's just ammo in there, and that's I'm it. There's this nothing. Bathroom. There's nothing else in there. It's really early on. Um, it's what side of the mansion? It? It's on the uh. It's the east wing. It's east wing. on the other side of the dog corridor. So you know, you go through the dog corridor. Yeah. And okay. then um and then there's a kind of winding gas bend corridor. And it's it's off that. Oh so it's, like, it's yeah. I th I think I know. I think I know where it is, yeah. Yeah. So it's um it's just like there's just a bath. It's not a public bathroom because obviously this is someone's house. So there's like a mm. bath there, and then just around a little corner, um, there's a there's a toilet which you kinda can't see when you first come in. You have to go around a bend to get to it um and um nothing happens in it in the original game and they've played with that by putting zombies in it in like re-releases of the game so like in the gamecube remake um 
you you can get a key item out of the bath. The bath's full, and it does the classic the classic thing where the um, way, uh, it drains. Drain bath yeah. Be in there. Um, but the, they did that in the remaster, the, the HD remaster, right? Didn't they? The PC remaster, sorry, the one was on. I forgot what they called that one. Hmm. Yeah, the... that's because that's a, that's a port of the GameCube remake on PC. Yeah, didn't they? Imp they improved it though visually though as well, didn't they? For that one, I think they called it something different in the Game Boy, in the GameCube one, not the Game Boy one. <laughs> no, they didn't. No, it's just. Did it's they? Called Are we sure? No, yeah, it's it's literally it's a port of the GameCube game. They they spruced it up a little bit. They added a, a couple of little extra graphical effects. They redid some of the rooms. Mm -hmm. um but it's it's a port it's just an enhanced port of the gamecube game um but uh it, it's game gameplay wise that's the same and besides that there is also a actual port of the original resi not the remake like the support of the actual ps1 game to ds um and they added then a, a ranged mode in that which is like harder and has more zombies in it and um in that one when you go into the bathroom you know the way i mentioned there's a there's there's like a toilet around the corner that you can't quite see there's a zombie yeah. which stands around the corner like in front of the toilet and uncharacteristically stays completely silent and doesn't move until you come around that corner and then it jumps <laughs> at you and it's like they've put a jump scare in there and i like the way like that bathroom originally was actually like a safe area and they've they've added zombies in there later on and put jump scares in in a place where you aren't expecting it which is a nice touch yeah, I I think I rem I think I remember that actually. I I'm not like 100% because it's been a while. I said it's been a while. It's actually it's uh, yeah, it's been a couple of years since I played the first Resident Evil. I did play it not long ago. It was like t like two and a half years ago now, which isn't that long ago, but you know, yeah. my memory's not the best. That old time's kicking in. I mean, it's I haven't played Resident Evil anyway. <laughs> I don't know how we got here. What are we talking about? I mean, about? um, Silent Hill. Oh, right, yeah, Same sense. difference, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that'll, that'll upset people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're both survival horrors, I guess, so. Um, yeah. Gameplay-wise, they're not actually all that different at all, really. Um, they are, they, they, like, Silent Hill clearly took a lot of inspiration from Resident Evil. Yeah. But even though it's got all those survival horror mechanics, they, they have different folks. Really fun to play. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're totally different focuses, obviously, because it's a completely different type of horror in Silent Hill. But like the survival horror stuff never comes into it. You get a stupid amount of ammo in Silent Hill all the time. I have like 150 pistol bullets at one point when I was playing Silent Hill, um, and I am actually playing it on normal. Um, for this playthrough, I don't usually. Um, I just messed up and picked normal, and I couldn't be bothered to reset. So I was like, I guess I'm playing on normal then. And I've got like 150 bullets, and it's it, it didn't combat. It's just there because I think they felt that it had to be there, but it really doesn't add anything at all. Gotta have those for the boss battles, really but... fun pyramid boss battles. <laughs> yeah, but where like you don't fight him, <laughs> you've just got to run away from him. Well, I mean, there's areas where you like you get stuck there, and you've just got to shoot him for a little bit or just wait it out. I'm pretty mm. sure. There's yeah, those situations. You know, doesn't make a difference, but you have just got to escape. You've got to just run around and make sure you don't get hit for a while, and then he gets bored and, and fighting you and he walks Yeah. Away. But it, it's one of those situations where it's like, at first, you don't know whether you're supposed to shoot him or not, so you just start shooting and you waste a bunch of ammo on him. Yeah, you do. Just unload on him the first time you play. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's like at the end of the apartments. There's one of those it situations is, yeah, yeah, in there. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's really cool, uh, because it, like, I was thinking about that when I was doing that that battle um, a couple of days ago because it's not your typical boss battle in like a big wide boss arena. Like you're on the, you're in a tiny cramped stairwell in an apartment block, and there's barely any room to move, and you've somehow got to got to avoid being struck by this massive demon with this huge knife. And it's only the fact that his wind up is stupidly slow. Um, that you can get past him and you can get around him because he stands still, obviously, to start winding up his attack, which gives you mm. loads of time to move. But there really isn't much space at all. Um, you've kind of got to stand in each opposite corner and bring him right over to the extreme end of the room and then run over to the other extreme end of the room. Um, because if you if you don't do that, you, there just won't be enough space to, to be safe from him because you're in such a small, confined space. And it, that's, that's just very ungame like to have it designed that way but very yeah. silent hill i don't know how i felt about those boss but it felt like not super interesting to me personally but hey 
I guess because I just knew it was like, hey, wait out the timer. It was one of those situations. Yeah, I think it's just meant to really freak you out the first time. It's obviously never going to be as effective after you've mm. played for the first time. But the first time you are stuck in that tiny room with him, it is horrifying. And you don't know how to deal with him. And you don't know yeah. that he's going to leave after a certain amount of time. So Yeah, there's no countdown. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I, think, I think it works. Um, and, it, and it's a nice touch that when, when the, um, the siren starts going and he does leave, uh, he starts walking towards the stairwell and goes down the flooded stairwell. If you're in the way, he'll take like one last pot shot at you as he's leaving. <laughs> Which is a nice touch. <laughs> you think you're safe. So you, like, uh, there's been a couple of times that I've been playing it and I've forgotten that he does that. And I think he's safe once the siren's going and then he swings at me anyway as he walks past. <laughs> just a little cheeky swing before he cheeky gets swing. off. There's massive kitchen knife for some reason. What is like? What is this blade? It is massive. I think it's literally called the Great Knife, and I'm pretty sure it's genuinely just a giant kitchen knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he came. To, he uh, got put in Dead by Daylight as well, didn't he? He did. We, we he had. Did I remember we uh, we spoke about that. I don't know how long ago that was, but um, because I remember the Konami account tweeted out. Some like really vague Silent Hill stuff, and everyone was like, yeah, oh, "New right. Silent Hill, New Silent Hill," and then and they were like, "No, no, it's just to promote the Dead by Daylight character." Oh yeah, that was a mess. Oh, they just—it's it, oh, just I hate the way they just wheel out Silent Hill to make a quick book these days, and that's all it's for. Do you remember the um the Pachinko game, the Silent Hill two Pachinko yeah. game? Yeah, there's one for Castlevania you know. as well. Oh. It makes me sad. Like, you know, like, it's a shame because Konami has so many IPs that I really like, and they're all just getting dragged through the mud. There's nothing we can do about it. It's just a sad time. Metal Gear, Castlevania, Silent Hill. Oof. They're like the big three, at least, that I can think of. Yes. Uh, Mega Man as well, famously, doesn't get much love these days. It gets more than it used to, to be fair. Well, I mean, Capcom. Capcom wouldn't even acknowledge its existence, actually. So it's not too bad these days. But they, they, did actually, they did actually make a new Mega Man game, at least recently. In recent years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, they did they, they, they pay more attention, but it was a bit of a meme for a while, wasn't it? How much they used yeah. to ignore Mega Man. Well, I mean, Capcom, for a while, have, like, they've been making their comeback. They've been hitting us with those Resident Evil games. They've been like, hey, guys, Devil May Cry 5, boom. Enjoy. By the way, everyone, go play Devil May Cry 5. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. No, I'm just... Oh, I might go play Devil May Cry 5 again. That'll be what I talk about next week, because Devil May Cry 5 is a great game that everyone should play. Highly recommend. <laughs> just don't like that kind of game. Sure, it's great if you're into it, to be fair, but it's not for me. If you were, in, if you were into the com like combat kind of stuff, you... You definitely love those games. They're like, oh, oh yeah. No, I know I would. So, um, I think that's all I've played. I, I'm sure I've played other games, but online it's just going blank. They are um, definitely. I'm I've trying. Not had much time this week, and when I have had time, I've just been playing. Um. Oh, yes. I've just been I playing played... the summer game. <laughs> I've, well, I've been just playing Among Us, um, but I've just remembered that yesterday I played Untitled Goose Game again because it got a it oh co-op, co-op uh, co couch patch. Patch. Yeah. Oh boy, it's it's like it was already really funny, but it's like ten times funnier now because now you can just harass the village with two people. <laughs> I had a great time. They're just like screwing around, couch co-op, classic. You can't beat it. It's just. Like I'm, I'm sad that it's mostly dead, but like thankfully the Switch is keeping it going, and I've got so many split screen co-op games on the Switch, and oh, it's just so much fun. It's just great because you can like, because because now one one person can be like distracting someone while the other person's doing the tasks, and I like, think it just makes it so much like it's like it's like it's funnier and it's also kind of weirdly more strategic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, isn't the point in the game, but like it feels it feels cool to be able to pull off stunts like that. It's a good laugh. No. Great game. I don't know if you've played it at all. I've not actually played it. I've watched people play it and been like, wow, this game looks like a lot of fun. But I was also like, I was also like, you know, I didn't know if I'd really get too much out of it. Kind of like, uh, it reminded me of Goat Simulator in a sense, but I feel like it has more 
to it than Goat Simulator, at least. Um, well, I mean, it's got a better, better sense of humor than Goat Sim because I think Goat Sim's sense of humor wears thin really quick, doesn't it? Um, mm. and it, it's, um, it's, it's got a, it's got a kind of better sense of humor than that because it's not kind of, that kind of, it's not trying too hard like Goat Sim does. It's I kind of, I kind of like its sense of humor. It's just encouraging you to just be a little shit, basically, and it's mm. very British, British as well. Um. I think the only problem oh. with it is it is super duper short. It's like you can finish it in like two hours, um, and there really isn't there isn't even that much to really mess with. So like once you've done the tasks, and mm. um, that's that's about it because the tasks show you all the things that you can mess with, and and you've basically seen that all it's got. And for like fifteen pound, I'm I'm guessing twenty dollars, um, it's not a hell of a lot of content. <laughs> It's yeah. very well made and beautiful looking game, um, but it's it's kind of a lot to ask for for such a short game. It's any downside, really. Yeah, I um, I think I think it does look like a lot of fun. I think if they had like a workshop integration or something, they could make that so much more interesting because people could make their own custom maps and stuff and just make silly stuff happen. Mm. I think that'd be a good way to go about it, especially with them adding like multiplayer stuff in now. It maybe keep people interested but i don't know if they'll actually do that yeah i've been hoping that they'd kind of add more content which they haven't mm. really done so far that 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 color patch is the first thing really and i don't know that hardly counts really i'm sure it's like a decent amount of work but it's not really new content you know yeah when did it come out uh a while no, back. on pc it only came out in september 2020 that's what they've been doing they've been making a pc port it's been a while only... though, yeah. It only came out in September, on PC. In, on PC, on PC, apparently. Um, I'm sure I mean, it was out a... before that. I could have sworn. September swore. 2019, it came out on console. So yeah, it's 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 over a year old. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. I thought it was out on PC around around that same time as well. Yeah, so did I actually. Um, Hang on, unless Steam is lying to me. Steam says it's, it's it came out on 23rd of September, but apparently 23rd of September is when the... Okay, no, no, yeah. Uh, it came out on Steam and itch.io on the 23rd of September. Um, unless it was on PC via a different store before then. Maybe, I don't, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. All I know is I had it on Switch a year ago, so... Um, yeah. That's where I got my update. Fair enough, but yeah, there's, you know what, there are a couple more multiplayer games that we do maybe need to try for next week, because yeah. Fall Guys has a Season 2 update, and I've still not actually tried Season 2, so I don't know how yeah, much they've I, changed. I, mean, I think we need to try that. There's not. There's been like zero buzz about it, which has surprised mm. me. I know I know the game, I knew obviously that it was going to drop off pretty quickly, but not like this quickly. I thought people would at least be interested in what Season 2 had, but apparently um, it's just there's like four new maps and it's fairly rare that they show up because it's it's four maps and you know what the algorithm's like in that game it can be weird yeah. with pick a map um apparently they've added like a playlist so you can have a uh, gauntlets only um so like there's no team games and like it's just the gauntlets maps which is which is cool um but apparently that rotates every, that playlist will rotate every week so it'll be a different thing every week I don't mind that, because I feel like if you did split them into playlists, you're going to split the player base as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair enough. Um, any problem with with Gauntlet only is the only final Gauntlet map is Four Mountain, so you're going to get that yeah. every time. I mean, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> it but, is uh, what it is. No, we, we do have to give that a go at some point, because, I don't know, I just want to see what it's like. The problem with Fall Guys is it it took too long. That's what I was saying for a while. It was taking too long to bring out the next season. I think if they would have executed that a lot earlier, maybe put in like, workshop support for that game would be great. Or like custom games mm. would work really well for Fall Guys. And I feel like they've just been too slow at it. Yeah, they've said that it, it would be too difficult. I, th I think they've said um, to implement a map editor because people have been saying, let us like just make maps. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think they need to drip feed maps more often. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm still going to keep an eye on it. I I think it's a really like really cool, fun party game, and I'm definitely going to be dropping into it here and there um, for the foreseeable. But I know a lot of people are just going to kind of drop it and never go back and be a shame. 
especially since it's like a battle royale game so i need there to be a big player base as well so i hope that doesn't happen to too many yeah. people but i can see a lot of the kiddly winks with their short attention spans are probably already back to fortnite or playing among us i mean it's, it was like fl a flavor of the week type of game wasn't it so we've went from that to among us and now the big one is phasmophobia which everyone's mm. playing now which it it, it looks like it's a fun game if you're really into role playing. I say that just because I know I'm not gonna get scared if I play that game. I'm, like if I if I like whenever I do like get scared, it's kind of just like you know, you play it up to make people laugh. You know, like not even yeah, for like stream. Like I don't even do that for stream. Like I'll do that just when hanging out with people. I do that <laughs> just because it's funny. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I've looked at that game and I'm like, I kind of feel, I kind of feel like I'd want to play it, but also I'm like, I'm not sure. I don't know. I feel like that's another, that's another game that's going to drop off very quickly as well. Yeah, it doesn't really interest me, honestly. Um, mm. It's not that it looks bad. It's just, it doesn't look like quite enough for me to want to play it. Um, I probably wouldn't have played Among Us um, if it wasn't so cheap. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, it... <laughs> It gives me, like, I don't know, like, really early access Unity sort of Oh, it definitely game. has that vibe. Yeah. Like a... Oh, just every single the locate. creepypasta game. <laughs> like, yeah. all the Slenderman games over the years. It's just that, isn't it? It's too similar to that sort of thing. I'm going a little bit jaded now. I'm a bit like, okay, I've seen that before. Um, mm. yeah. It's just that they're doing it with, like, a co-op, and they've got, like, the voice recognition stuff, and... It's like, oh, you can speak to the ghost and the ghost will respond, which I think stuff like that's cool. Again, for role playing and stuff, I think it'd be super interesting if you want to role play a bunch of ghost hunters. That It's a cool concept. I just don't think it's going to hold people's attention for very long. I feel like people are probably already looking for another game. Mm. Honestly. And then you got the people catching up who are just now playing. Because I've also noticed um, there's a game called Party Animals. I recently released a demo on Steam that I think I've seen a few people play. Essentially, it, essentially it's Gang Beasts, but with weapons. And So if you remember Gang Beasts, I do again... Gang Beasts. So, so many games have knocked off Gang Beasts since it came out. So this looks many. like another knockoff of Gang Beasts, but hey, you've got weapons this time, so you can kind of taser people and they fall off the map and stuff as well. Yeah, or you can bonk it. them with hammer. Uh, yeah, that's very much got the same kind of idea. Yeah. 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 Sure, it's fun. Um, we could give that a go because so it's a free demo. So I'm down. Yeah, true. We could. I, I, I'm sure it will be fun. Games, games like that are always fun. Um, Gang Beasts is well, it's kind of managed to somehow become unfun as time has gone on. But like, it's a great idea. It's the, I think the thing is that they they're always just fun for a few games, and then you've kind of. That's it then, you know. It's one of the um, party games you just pull out every now and then. You're like, let's. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Let's just have a game of Gang Beasts. Hmm? But, I mean, it's a free demo, so. Yeah, that's why I suggested it. I'm like, hey, you know, we can give it a try at some some points. But yeah, it's Gang mm -hmm. Gang Beasts, but fairies. But I'm pretty sure you could dress up as a chicken and stuff in Gang Beasts anyway. That's hot. That's so hot. Someone wants to clip that out of context. <laughs> Utter silence. I thought I was, I was just going to leave you hanging there on that one. <laughs> oh, but I was going to dig myself deeper. It's fine. I'm I'm a clipping machine. <laughs> we can clip a lot of what you say out of context. It's, it's pretty great. I should just do that at some point. I'll go through, make a little compilation. Tef's best moments. <laughs> Listen, mate. Everything sounds bad out of context. Tef's best moments could be taken out of context. And used against you, okay? Don't start this war. Could, could, you could can't it? finish it. I mean, I, I can finish this fight. Don't be I, using Halo 3 taglines. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm glad you caught on to that. I figured you would, I mean, but no, just wanted to make sure. I was going to miss a Halo 3 reference. Yeah. I was like, come on, man. Come on, man. Uh, but yeah, um, I guess that's all we've really been playing this week i guess it is mm. uh, unless you're playing any arcade <laughs> well 
Let me just push up my, up my glasses. Yes, Arcage. I've actually um, I've not played a lot of Arcage. I actually went on oh Arcage, God. and uh, there was a labor bug for some reason. For some reason, there was a bug that wouldn't let me regenerate labor, and I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna log off now. <laughs> Be very yeah, sad. That's fair enough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that no, was my that experience. Was that was my experience with Arcage. I feel like there's something else I've played, but my brain just can't. It's like, nope, don't, don't remember. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on. Mm. No. No, there's nothing there. I don't really care, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, For the I'm audio listeners, just we, just, on, we, we were just laughing there, by the way. There was no awkward silence. We were just laughing. You just couldn't really hear. No, they, I'm sure they can hear laughing. Laughing is old, well. I, I was, I, I was, I was, I was pretty quiet. I feel like I just want to make that clear for all the audio oh. listeners out there over on Spotify and iTunes. No. <laughs> Listen, that's great for the audio listeners as well. It is. It is. <laughs> I'm sure you guys appreciate it. All zero of you. Uh, <laughs> Don't tr talk to our audio listeners that way, Tef. We don't have an audience on any platform. You're a figment of my imagination, Sunrise. Shall shall we go take a quick break and move on to the news? Because we're clearly at the the end of the rope at this point. <sighs> All right. So we'll be back in ten minutes' time, and then we will get stuck in to the gaming news, which is where we will rag on all all the things. So don't go anywhere. And we'll be right back. All right, and we're back. Hello. Oh, yes. You know what time it is. Oh, yes, indeed. It's the time Tef has definitely been waiting for. <laughs> been looking forward to this one. It's time to rag on your favorite big publisher. And it's not Ubisoft. Oh. Oh, no. This time it's EA, everyone's favorite. Oh. I feel like so, they've been keeping their head down, you know, lately. Mm, yeah, it, I mean, yeah, you're in the cycle. Not, we're not being blatant about it. Yeah, well, they're not being blatant. They weren't. They're still scummy. They just don't get anything to be really, really. I think this is the this is the thing, right? They're not they're not doing anything which really stands out as horrific anymore. Like that's what Ubisoft's doing at the moment. They're still mm. being really greedy and horrible, but they're doing it in like a low key way now. And in a lot of cases, they're being greedy and horrible. Um, uh, in such a way that people have stopped noticing because they've been doing it at the, at the same level for so long. And that's exactly it's what's going on here normal. today. It's just become normal. And that's what's going on here today. This is only interesting because it's being called out and it's being called out by a big name. So in case you haven't heard about this, um, FIFA 21 Legacy Edition on the Switch. Oh, yes. The Legacy sorry, sorry. Edition. Love FIFA. So, <laughs> oh, FIFA's so good. FIFA's shit. It's a bad game. It's just, uh, it. Uh, I'm not even going to go down that route. It's a big rant. I'm sure you, you all probably feel the same way about sports games. Um, they're all just copy paste. Sports. This is bad. Sports, ball, EA sports. So, this is like a particularly bad example of sports games being just rehashed because the Legacy Edition is um, it's on a Switch and it's not the same as the version that's on like the the big consoles. TM, the more powerful ones. This is like a, I think I think it's like running on an engine which originally was on, on like the PS2 because um, there used to be a legacy edition for PS2 for just for Brazil, you know, because football is really big in Brazil, but Brazil is really mm. behind on consoles. They kept making PS2 games until like 2016. And then they started like doing it on other like underdeveloped cheaper consoles or whatever. So, um, so the Switch has this really underdeveloped um, version of FIFA on a um, really old clunky engine. Um, and for FIFA 2021, but it's Legacy Edition. Or FIFA 21, Legacy Edition. Uh, IGN <laughs> put out their review of it this week, and it just opens with seeing as EA copied and pasted last year's FIFA onto Switch again this year, once again saying it has the same gameplay without any new developments or significant enhancements, which they've literally put on the store page. By the it's way, selling points. That's a selling point. That's a bullet point on the store. Um, so IGN, uh, I've just decided to do the same and copied and pasted the FIFA 20 for Switch review. 
which by the way the fifa 20 review just says this game is exactly the same as fifa 2019 and lists all the ways that it's the same as fifa 2019 so they've just copied and pasted their old review they've not even bothered to like like find and replace every instance of fifa 20 and change it to 21 like it still says fifa 20 it's the same review they've just copied and pasted it this is amazing i mean the game itself is fucking horrific. I, they've literally, it's the same game. They've just updated the roster and they're selling it for uh, $50, 45 pounds. Unacceptable. But like, my God, <laughs> the balls on IGN. It's oh, it's so good. And I didn't expect this from IGN, of all people, because they're usually just sucking up to all these big publishers. But like, oh, I'm, I'm so glad someone's called them out. It's beautiful. It's so good. I love how they've done it. It's got class. It's got class. I, f- I feel like someone had to call it out. It's like, come on. Like, like EA, EA I mean, there's no way EA is like, yeah, we'll get away with this. <laughs> no one knows. But, but as bad as it is, it's not that different from what the main FIFA series does anyway. Yeah. Because they they make very, very small changes year to year. Um, it is mostly a roster update with a couple of little changes. Um, this is just worse because it's literally the same game with a roster mm. update. Um, but, but they have grass physics anyway, really. in the in the new updated Ooh. FIFA's. So the grass, oh, the blades of grass as they wave. Oh, that's what you need, isn't it? That's so important to the strategy of football. <laughs> It's just, um, I think it's it's really interesting. It's, I mean, obviously, the fact that the game is just a blatant um, grab at your money is is interesting in its own right. But that's typical EA. I'm not even trying to hide it. Interested by e- yeah, but that's that's EA though. They don't, this is what I mean. They don't try and hide it anymore. People are so used to it that people don't even get angry anymore. It's just there. It's, it's, what they it's do. the fact it's that it was a sell. Yeah, it was like a, on the the store page. Like, hey, this is the same game as last year. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they they're not they're not even they, they literally aren't hiding it. They are making get a sell on point. Let's let's look it up. Hang on. So FIFA twenty one Switch eShop. Let's uh, let's get the store page up. Do, 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 do. Legacy edition FIFA twenty one. Uh, oh, do you read do you read it off for me, please? FIFA gameplay. FIFA twenty one Legacy Edition will feature the same gameplay innovation from FIFA twenty without innovation. any development or significant enhancements. <laughs> But do they know it what the word actually, the word innovation, innovation means? <laughs> actually, says that um, it'll 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 also feature some of the world's most famous stadiums, including some brand new to FIFA 21. Gameplay features and modes will have parity with FIFA 20 on Nintendo Switch. <laughs> parity meaning it's exactly the same. Why did why did they be stadiums? Oh. That's not- that's just not oh, true. I'm surprised they never used the word iconic in there as well. I feel like they love throwing it's... iconic in there. Be like some, I, they should have been like iconic stadiums. That would have been a bigger selling point. <laughs> when they they write it, they write it in such a way so that it draws attention to the fact that it's the same as FIFA 20. It's almost like they yeah. don't want people to buy it. It's really weird. Like so, there's there's also like a list of bullet points for the legacy modes. Um, because for some reason they don't just call it the modes that the game has. It's legacy modes. These are the games. These are the game modes that are available in the legacy edition, which is, again is drawing attention to the fact that it's an old, outdated, crappy version of the game. It's like they don't want you to buy it. And then, but then it goes: the following game modes will be included in FIFA 21 with the same features from FIFA 20. Do, do you want me to buy the game or not? I don't understand. <laughs> What if this is like a massive big brain play, as the kids say, from EA, and they're putting this out there so no one buys it, and then they go, well, now we don't have to put games on Switch, guys. <laughs> like, we, we don't have to spend money on that. But I feel yeah, like they'd make, they'd make money off porting games over anyway. But you know what? This is, I don't know, there's something going on. Maybe, maybe uh, Bowser had a big disagreement with e- who's the CEO of EA. What's his name? Mr. EA. I, I forgot his name. Mr. EA? Yeah. Uh, uh, Andrew Wilson is apparently called. I did not know that. Yeah. They had a disagreement <laughs> over Twitter or something. Bowser wasn't very happy. And they were like, all right, you know what? You're getting the same FIFA you got last year then. I want to make sure people know. <laughs> That'll spite you. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Maybe. I feel like EA could have just stopped making games though. Um... If they wanted to, they could have just stopped making it on the Switch because they don't make really any games for the Switch anyway. EA, like this is one of the few examples where they do. 
Um, I mean, it's not I'm hard not sure to make it for the Switch if you just port it over. If you cop, copy I mean, paste a few assets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's, it's not even like the new game. It's like an, like, an, like I was saying earlier, it's an old engine. Um, yeah. But I don't understand why Legacy Edition is on there. Like when they were doing that Legacy Edition for the PS2, it made sense for the Brazilian markets. Um, but Brazil, no one in Brazil owns a Switch. Switches are, despite being underpowered, they're still expensive. And in Brazil, and this is for like um, the Eastern market. They're like, hey, you guys don't really keep up with football, do you? Here, have the Legacy Edition, so you can. I don't know. I don't know what the logic is here. <laughs> I really don't know. I don't understand it. it. Everything about this is so strange. Why does this game exist? Who is playing it? I'm Who still plays play FIFA? I mean, a lot of people still play FIFA. FIFA's I huge. I don't. I don't. I don't understand yeah. it. I don't know why people buy it every year. I don't get it. Get your ultimate team mm. trading cards, but build. Get, get make your own custom Chuck Norris character. Throw him in your team. Have a good time. Kick kick, kick a ball mm. around. The ball goes over one side, and then uh, then it gets kicked back over the other side. Oh, that that was all. He almost went in. Didn't go in. Okay, now he's gonna kick the ball out into the middle again. It's in the middle again. Oh, oh, it's going over that. Oh, he scored. Oh, oh, he's won up. Hey, you just, you're just being a bit cringe, you know. You're just being a bit sports ball ball-y. I mean, Sorry. that's basically what league is like. Not wrong As... with football. I'm not a huge fan myself, but there's nothing wrong with it. And there's nothing wrong with FIFA. FIFA can be fun. I've played FIFA with mates and had a good but time. But it's the same I game. I don't see why you're gonna buy it every year. Why I've got to buy it every year? I've, I've got. I have got FIFA Road to World Cup 1998 on PS1. It's still a good game. Why can't you just play that? <laughs> <laughs> it's not all that different at all from FIFA 21. They just... Uh, it's the same thing every year, and... Uh, do, do they still do Ultimate Team? Is that a thing that's still in the games? Of course, of course uh... they still do Ultimate Team. It makes them a stupid amount of money. They would that's... definitely... I think Ultimate Team is the main reason it's still going, and still I've, so popular. I thought in some countries that would be, like, they would have gotten rid of that now because of laws. I mean, that probably doesn't exist in Belgium. But yeah. Everywhere else, it'll kill this sort of thing. Well, I mean, you know, it just, that's the main thing that upsets me about FIFA, the fact that they're selling the same game and then people buy into it and then they buy the Ultimate Team every year. It's the same with all EA stuff, though. Like, people shouldn't be supporting any of EA's games, and yet they do, because EA's got that gacha, dopamine hit sort of thing going on where people do, people fall for it. And they just they just don't think about whether they're even enjoying themselves properly anymore, or whether it's just a dopamine mm. hit. I mean, that's that's all FIFA is. It's a gachu game. <laughs> that's the, that <laughs> is disguised as a football game, and they don't. And anyone that plays a football game doesn't know what a gachu game is anyway. So they're like, "Ooh, I got me a Ronaldo C- Cristino, whatever his name is." Cristino Ronaldo. Not that that's <laughs> Let's <laughs> not watch a lot of football. It's like him and the, the messy, the messy guy. <laughs> the messy man. <laughs> He's real messy. <laughs> it shows on how much I know about football. I've been to football I... matches as well. I've been to no, a lot. You haven't. That is grim. I used to get taken as a kid, and I just didn't didn't want to be there. It was a sad time. <laughs> I can imagine that. Is that your dad's doing? Your dad strikes me as a big football man. Yeah. He's got that he's got that football energy about him. Mm. <laughs> so um, Def- definitely would, you know, get in some football right. <laughs> <laughs> football who looking. Yeah. Papa's hands a football who looking pass it on. <laughs> Alright. I feel like we've talked about this one for long enough. We have. We got I don't know how we got so much out of that. <laughs> It's always fun to make fun of sports games. Absolutely. And if you play them, you should feel bad. <laughs> Absolutely. You should also sure feel bad if you're one... playing anime games. Just saying. I mean, I feel like we're hitting both sides of the spectrum here now. <laughs> I feel like we've just... The whole audience is left now. No yeah. <laughs> what likes us? But, uh, yeah. Who wants to help me make an anime gacha game? Anyone down? Cause uh, no, I'm down. Sounds cause easy. Genshin Impact has uh now made a million, a hundred million, which is uh recouped all its costs in two weeks since release. It's insane. 
absolutely insane, especially considering it's a game where you really don't need to no. get involved in the gacha stuff if you don't want to. That's, it's madness. But yeah, it's. Madness. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't get it. But p- people apparently bought into it. Maybe it's because I'm just. I'm. I've never really been the kind of person to spend money on this stuff, so I don't have that personality or whatever or whatever trait it is mm. that makes people go. Hey, you I really have to be a certain kind of person, don't you? Yeah, I have got a lot of expendable income. Hey, look, that I really want this this anime girl. You know, she she uh, you know, is my type of anime girl. Let me just keep swiping my card until I get it. My waifu. Yeah, my my waifu. Oh, oh, look, I'm like <laughs> I'm like six thousand down now, six k <laughs> down. Oh, oops. What are you gonna do? happen to anyone but so I, I, I've, still, I've still yet to play this game um I, I really i really should give it a go what and what really like interests me about it is the way like because it's on everything except switch i think they're talking about bringing it to switch though but it's on like mm. everything else and it's like pc console and mobile it's got cross saves as and, well and it's got cross saves so you can like just pick it up and play it anytime you feel like essentially if you wanted to you just pick it up and play it for a little bit and i think that's so interesting i actually i couldn't remember if it was on mobile um i'm sorry if i was just on my phone it wasn't being rude it was for the podcast um i couldn't remember if it was on mobile or not, but i thought it's got it to is. be it's, a, it's an asian mobile game and it is yes can you see that i can't even see what's on my screen yeah yeah we can see we can see there are anime girls but yeah it's right there so that's what i was looking <laughs> up i wasn't being rude but, um <laughs> Please still love me, but uh, yeah. I mean, it's insane that it works on mobile as well. Like it's such a well yeah. optimized game. Like it's it, gorgeous looking, isn't it? Mm, it's done really well, and I honestly, I I think they deserve the win on this because they did, they did a really good job with the game. It does worry me in a sense that a hundred million has been made on this game, so people are spending that much on the game. Which makes me think, mm. maybe there is, you know, gacha games do have that addic- like addiction problem, that like gambling itch that scratches, which oh, I think is, is the big concern around stuff like that, which is why I'm like, I'm hesitant to be like, hey, take you in, you know, as the kids say. I mean, you've got to remember, though, that um, this game is mostly popular in Japan, Korea, and China. Way more popular over there than it is here. And there, those markets are it's already very... entrenched in, in gacha. So that is, it, like, I a big part it... of the culture. Exactly. And it, all the games there are like that. I wouldn't say that it's... Um... And it means that it's coming to the West necessarily. Um, the game is popular here, but it's it seems to have gained a reputation as a gacha game that's surprisingly cheap to play here so i don't think it's really pulling in wales here as much it's just mm. a very different market there where it's already taken over i do agree that it's a, a worrying practice uh, to have as like a mainstream practice um in gaming like it is in asia that's bad for asia that's bad for their market in my opinion yeah. but i don't think it's here so i think we're probably cool and i think it's great <laughs> yeah i think it is i think it's a point to bring up though just you know it's been like mm, it's not the best Thing in the world, but it's cool that yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, who wants to make a gacha game with me? I got you with anime girls, a lot of anime girls, guys. It's gonna be a lot of anime girls, so many anime girls. It'll be free to play, you won't have to pay a dime. But if you want to, you can get many anime girls, <laughs> many, many. But uh, yeah, I just thought we'd follow up because last week we spoke about how it made a bunch of money and uh, now it's went even further. So I was like, oh. That's a big leap. What was it yeah, last week that it made? It up so much. I can't. I honestly can't remember now. It's like thirty or sixty. Kind of, it'll double by next week at the rate it's going. <laughs> yeah, insanely. And they've got like new characters on the way already. There's already like previews of new characters that are coming out, which people are going to spend money on as well. You know they will. Oh, I bet. Oh yes. But yeah. Um. Like, I've known people have been re-rolling, so they've been making brand new accounts to play through to try and get the characters they want as well. So a lot of people have been doing that over and over. Stuff like that. Yeah. It's, it's a it, common practice in Gacha, from what I understand. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I, I take it that it's the typical sort of situation where um, if you're willing to 
waste enough of your life playing it, you can get all the same stuff by just wasting time yeah. rather than paying straight up. Yeah, I thought so. I, I, that, I, I don't mind that system too much. At least there is another way of getting it. I really hate it when something's completely behind the paywall. I don't think that's cool at all. Yeah, so you can earn it. It just It's going to take you a long time. And I feel like yeah. at the rate they release characters, you'll probably never have them all. Because that's how gacha games work. They always, from what I was told by someone who was very deeply in gacha, they always start off with like 20 characters. And then before you know it, they've got like 100. And you're like, oh, oh. And then they'll have like alternative versions of different characters as well. So there'll be characters that like, you know, maybe are in a swimsuit <laughs> instead. Course. And that's a different version of the character you can get if you want to get that character. And then you can get duplicates as well, and there's all kinds of stuff like that. So it gets a little crazy eventually. But uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes. I think uh, it's just kind of cool. It's interesting. Definitely need to play it. You've pretty yeah. much played all con all the content it's got to offer at the moment, haven't you? Most Didn't of you it. Say yeah. yeah, I've played most of it. I did dip out after a bit. So uh, I've got I've got to try it again, maybe, and keep going with it. I never got far enough. Like I did a lot of the, st I did like the one big storyline that it starts you off with, and then there's a second zone area that it takes you to, and, and I think there's probably a whole quest line there, but I've not done that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe there's not. Maybe I'm just wrong there, but there's a whole area there which I've not properly really got into, and they've not released the other areas yet. They're gonna like drip feed them out, from what I understand. So, uh, eventually, there's going to be seven different zones, so there's five more to come, and I feel like they're going to drip feed them one by one, and then they'll probably add even more content on top of that, so they'll add, like, whole new islands or something. So, the game's going to have a lot of content, I think. How rapidly that comes out, I don't know, but it is a gacha game, so you'll have a lot of characters coming out, I can tell you that. I'm sure. Hmm. I definitely need to give it a go sometime. I think the cross save thing is just so cool as well. It'd be nice if I could like pick it up on different um, yeah. platforms, depending on what I feel like playing on. Because sometimes I want I feel like playing on PC, and sometimes I feel like playing on console. And it I, it can be really irritating when sometimes I get myself in a position where I want to play a game on console. Like there's say I want to play Mario Galaxy, but I also don't feel like sitting down on the couch and playing a console game. So I'm like, ah, oh, why can't it be on PC? Which I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, is technically butch. <laughs> you know, like I, I th actually think it's really cool that it's got proper cross save like that. I wish more games did that. I think that it does come at the cost of it of it always being online, though. Yes, true. Um, it is kind of one of those games where um, it's designed to be played mostly co op, though, isn't it? Yeah. I'm, the more I'm thinking about it, the more it's reminding me of Warframe. Actually, um, it's kind of you know if you, you know what I mean, where it's kind of like a single player slash co op game where you're supposed to really play it co op. Mm. Um, it's reminded me of that. I guess a lot Diablo of, kind of invented that sort of game. A lot of people feel like it, it's a lesser experience co op, from what I understand as well, because every time you are uh, essentially when you bring in a, a co op partner, it reduces your party size. So when another person joins, it halves the party size, so you only get to switch between two characters and the other person gets to switch between two and eventually mm -hmm. all the co-op co eventually takes up all four other people so you can't switch on the fly eventually if you have everyone in which okay. some people some people don't really like i think that can be a really cool concept just yeah does that not make the strategy more interesting surely yeah i i feel like you've got to you know you've got to like communicate and do more stuff on the fly i feel like that's a cooler way of doing it, but... Yeah, I agree with that. Mean. Surely it's gotta be. Maybe I guess maybe once you've been... Well, yeah. Maybe you've just been spoiled with it for a while, because at the start, you, you're you just switching between four characters all the time. Mm. Which is nice. It's nice to do, because, again, you have, like, the different elements. But I think that would be cool to have your friends, like, be, hey, you be this element, I'll be this one. And then you can work together and be like, all right, I'll be water, you be electric. And, uh, you know... We'll just blast them. We'll, we'll like work together and then the other half of the party can be like I don't know, ice and flame or something. I don't know. Whatever else works together and make stuff happen with that. Yeah. God, I, I, I want to play it. Everyone just keeps saying it's Breath of the Wild so I'm like 
Breath of the, Breath of the what now? I love Breath of the Wild. I mean, I it's, it's, it's very inspired by Breath of the Wild. Again, it doesn't do oh, it. You can tell it's coming out. It doesn't do it as well, obviously, but it, well, for a free game, it's it's really good. But uh, yeah, that is that is it. So if you want to make an anime girl game, please do send your uh, email and your uh, all your money over to zanrise@gmail.com. You go ahead and do that. And yeah, that's it for that story. But. Should we talk a little bit about about Microstop? <laughs> hey, Microstop. Yeah, so uh, this passed me by. I'm glad that you dropped this into the news because I didn't see this, and this is this is interesting. Um, mm. I've never it's seen a, anything like this before. It's a bit of a big one as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. So um, if, if it passed you by like it did with me, um, Microsoft have gone into a partnership with GameStop um, to bring more Microsoft stuff into um, into the, into GameStop, and I don't just mean like they're going to be pushing Xboxes more. Like they're going to get uh, Surface notebooks and access to loads of Microsoft tools, and um, it basically they're they're more or less converting GameStops into Microsoft stores in the same way we have Apple stores. Um, that's kind of the way they're going with this it's really interesting it's really thrown gamestop a bone um because god yeah. knows they need it um i've never seen anything like it before though it's it's a little weird as well because there's gonna be that like there's like that conflict of interest when you have other parties wanting to sell their games there as well and it's <laughs> oh, it makes yes. you think like Sony are like, yeah, we want it. we'll sell our games here and the game stuff's like, no. We're a Microsoft store. <laughs> Go make your own store. <laughs> I don't know if that, I don't think that'll be the case, but it but it but it feels it feels weird, doesn't it? No, but it, there is definitely gonna be a bias in those shops from yeah. there, isn't there? Like it, it can't, they can't not be. Um and that that is that is strange. That's definitely strange. Um they're clearly going to push um, Xbox stuff. I feel like anything that's multi-platform, they're going to push the Xbox copies more than the PlayStation copies or the Switch copies or the PC copies or whatever. So, yeah, um, I, f- yeah. I feel like they might, they'll they probably stock them still, but they'll do it. They'll like maybe arrange displays in a certain way that yes. Microsoft yeah. stuff is very prevalent and you'll maybe see that first and maybe it'll be like a, all right, guys, this is this is how our stores need to be arranged. But then they're also talking like, mm. I'm also imagining it being like an Apple, an Apple store, but it's gonna be like a tacky Apple store <laughs> where you got the GameStop employee that comes up and is like, "Hey, what you looking at?" Teenagers like, yeah. "You want a Series X? <laughs> Would you like our Game GameStop card?" <laughs> well, man, I will never forget when I was like 12 years old. I went into a Game Station. Uh, rest in peace. No, uh, it's a shop we used to have in the UK, um, and um, I was looking at a copy of Fable Two or maybe Fable Three, um, one of them anyway, um, and I was I was kind of looking at it, and obviously I was like interested in it. I knew what Fable was. I played Fable One and Fable Two if the game was Fable Three, <laughs> but I definitely I knew the series, um, and I was kind of just looking at the box and you know do that thing you do when you're a kid where you just stare at it longingly like mm. well I wish I had a source of income so I could own this, and then like this like spotty pimply game station employee came up to me <laughs> and started trying to like he obviously needed to get his commission for that day and started doing the hard sell and he was like oh that game's really good and like he sort of pointed at the character on the front you know because on on the box art on Fable kind of he's kind of holding a blunderbuss. In, yeah, he's like he's like that. He's like, like I'm pretty not sure yeah, that's two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe I think he's holding a pistol in three. Um, so it probably was two where he's got like the blunderbuss. Um, mm. and and he was like, oh yeah, it's 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 really good. It's like Call of Duty, you know. You look at the gun, <laughs> and I was like, I was looking, I'm like, you all right, man? It's an RPG, pal. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, resale stores are strange. Especially like so much upselling goes on in game shops. I feel specifically like you mm. hear about it a lot with GameStop over the pond, and I know it does happen here in game and Game Station when that was the thing. Um, it's it's. I feel like it happens more in those shops than it happens in most other shops. It's really strange. Yeah. Um. 
It's going to be interesting to see this transition, though. I don't know how this is going to go, how this is going to work. Because, again, there is that conflict of interest that... I mean, you also, it, it's also a really funny thing because M Xbox have been moving towards being more like mobile phones now. So it will feel like, hey, here you can get this Xbox Series X 1.5. Or perhaps the Xbox Series X 2, which has the uh, a higher uh, a higher uh, CPU, more teraflops, more more RAM, so more tera more, tera uh, more teraflops. Of course, it renders a lot more polygons, guys, a lot more triangles. Um, or you can get this cheap version. Pip, pip. We'll give you on lease. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, like you can finance it, and they're gonna cost you eight years of your life paying it back. And then some like spot little kid just goes, "But I've got an Xbox on my iOS device." Oh, <laughs> very, very smooth, good. Smooth transition there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, more Microsoft stuff. Game Pass is coming to iOS now as well. I believe it's been on Android. It's on Samsung and Androids, right? You good? Uh, I think so, yeah. Um, I've, again, I don't use Game Pass. Don't have, don't have an Android phone. So mm. I don't know. Um, but you'll finally get to use Game Pass. I'm, I'm an Apple slot. Uh, <laughs> I love Go Apple. I don't care. I know it's not very cool <laughs> to like Apple, but I, I, I love Apple. I love iPhones. iPhones are way better than Android. I'm just putting it out there. It's just true. I, um, I think I think hardware hardware wise, they usually they usually are better, aren't they? But you know, they're also. Uh, well, I mean, the operating system is far better. Hardware yeah. can be... Mm, Android's often better with hardware. The the kind of custom chips in custom like processors in Apple phones can be really good, but like the cameras are as lag and things like that. It's more the mm. software, like iOS is a lot better than Android. I feel but like iOS runs smoother. It runs a lot smoother, oh, from what I understand. A lot smoother. Yeah, it does. And, you know, the phones stay get, get updates and still run well like five years after you bought them rather than slowing down after 18 months like android phones do but yeah i don't i've, ne I've never had an iphone just to cl clarify <laughs> uh, android well, android but b samsung anyway, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what we're talking about but uh yeah game pass it's gonna be on everything at this point game pass on your toaster next just wait <laughs> Yeah. So they are... they're having to circumvent some things, aren't they? Because iOS, um, well, Apple didn't really want Game Pass on the App Store because Apple are weird about game stuff for some reason, aren't they? Um, oh, there'll be a court case over this one. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, I did. I did see a little. Hmm. Who know? I mean, who knows at this point? So it was. It was like um. When they originally approached Apple to put the Game Pass app on the App Store, Apple went, um, no, we don't want that because they've got this problem with, um, for some reason, they don't want apps where you go in there and then there's a library of games with it in, inside it. They say that that breaks their terms of service because you've got a like store inside the store and they want mm. like all of the all of the um transaction stuff to go through the the app store so that they get a 30 yeah. cut and um, it does seem a little bit hypocritical because obviously things like netflix and hulu have a library inside them um and it's uh, game Pass is the exact same concept just with games but for some reason they don't like it and they and a apple said um if you do it then each game has to be an individual app <laughs> On the app store which would just be ridiculous and obviously like wouldn't wouldn't even work from like a logistics or a programming yeah. point of view it just would not work so um microsoft has said we're still going to do it we're still going to come out we're still going to release it on android we're going to have to do it through a direct browser-based solution um i assume that just means a website <laughs> that's surely that's all it can mean i mean yeah oh they're just they're being fancy about it Mm. Don't. Um, it's too complicated for you, for you kids. You wouldn't understand. But don't worry, we've got it under control. That's probably what they told the guys at Apple. And they're like, oh, okay, sounds good to me. Yeah, it's um, it's weird. It's it's gonna it's just gonna be a website, I guess. Um, which would be the the way of getting around it, which is fine, I guess. I mean, it won't be that different from an app. Most apps are just wrappers for websites anyway. Why not? It's obviously yeah. not quite as neat and tidy as an app, but if it works, it works. 
And if they're sticking it to Apple, which good for them, good good on them because Apple are being really scummy at the minute about about game apps for some reason. Yeah, you, know, you know the whole thing at Fortnite and that. I think yeah, that case is not till next year. <laughs> yeah, so we're not yeah. going to see a solution for that for a while. Maybe Microsoft will throw their hat in the ring because they're obviously getting affected by it as well because it's the same. It's this, it's the same basic issue. It's Apple being so weird about their app store and wanting people to put apps out in a very specific way so that they can take advantage of that thirty percent cut. It's the same bottom line here, you know. Yeah, but I don't know. It's it's a weird one, but it's you know we are just seeing Game Pass come to everything now. Again, Microsoft are just the getting their uh, the claws and everything. They're taking over GameStop. They're coming to iOS. They're coming to uh, every uh, fridge near you. Just wait. <laughs> Come to that sweet Samsung fridge. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's anything else we can really say on that one because we do have some. No. There's some big stuff to talk about now. This is actually a whole a story that's been it's been going on for quite a while now, and uh, I think it was overshadowed a bit by the Ubisoft allegations and stuff that came out because I think it was around the same time. But I I was following the story. I just forgot to bring it up for whatever reason, which I shouldn't have done. So let's talk about uh, Lab Zero. So Lab Zero, for those of you that don't know. They are the the people behind Skullgirls, for anyone that knows that, because that was actually it was one of my favorite like indie fighting games that came out. I don't know when it came out. It was a long time ago. Yeah, it was a couple of years back, but it was big, wasn't it? When it came out, it was mm. it was everywhere. A lot of buzz around it. Certainly, it, it was a really fun fighting game, but unfortunately, it's kind of all fallen apart after. After a bunch of employees resigned because the studio head had a bunch of abuse and inappropriate behavior allegations towards them. So it was, I believe it's Mike, Mike Z goes by, isn't it? Uh, I forgot his full name. Right. But my, I think, yeah, Mike Zaymont, he's called. Zaymont. Yeah, he Mike Z. But yeah, um. Zaymont, actually, I'm not sure. So yeah, because of the studio you had, apparently it was just very abusive, a lot of inappropriate behavior, stuff like this, and it caused a lot of people to resign. There was a lot of allegations. We're not really sure what's happening, and I, one of the games they've been working on recently, Indivisible, I think it's called, they yes. have to just straight up stop the partner. They can't do much with it now either. They've just decided... I think they've said they're just not supporting her anymore, are they? Um, yeah, that seems to be the way it's going, isn't it? Um, mm. well, so, so they said we're proud of the There's game. There's one final created, update, I think. Happy, happy that it's received positive response, uh, but we're sorry the journey's ended this way. Wish to thank all the individual players, new and old, um, and that, yeah, that's it. So uh, they just they don't feel like they can carry on, which is really sad. I, I don't know. Is there an, uh, one last update? I'm not there's, sure. I think there's one final update that they're pushing to Switch, I believe, was in the article. The one the one little, I don't know, little bit of hope is they are forming, like a bunch of the devs have formed a new studio called Future Club. So hopefully they go on to do some good things there and continue their work because they are really talented and they do a lot of good stuff. So hopefully that continues. It was just something. This has been a story that's going on for a while. So we just need to bring up the scum. <laughs> that is Mike Z. Such a shame. Such a shame. <laughs> no, for everyone else. Um, yeah. I mean, I am hoping that they all moved over to Future Club, and hopefully they are going to continue work, but on different games, I suppose. Mm. There's some decent credentials. Um, I'm just looking at Future Club's website now. Um, and there are some pretty pretty good credentials. I mean, obviously, they mentioned that they've got staff who've worked on Indivisible and Skullgirls, but they also mentioned League of Legends and the Scott Pilgrim game. And maybe the Scott, maybe people who worked on um, Indivisible and Skullgirls worked on Scott Pilgrim, actually. I that wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. They are very much just in the same, in the same vein. They, they do really specialize in that, like, 
hand-drawn 2D animation stuff, and it looks really good in all the games they they do it in. Skullgirls was like, I just I had so much fun with that game. I remember I think I bought it for our group at one point. I feel like I did. I feel like there was like a four pack that I bought for people, and I was like, let's let's play Skullgirls, guys, and uh, and then I played it a bit too much, and then no one wanted to play with me anymore. Everyone just got sick of it. You didn't want to enjoy it. Hate it when that happens. Hate it when you're enjoying a game more than your friends and you, know, you can't get people on to, to play it with you. It's the worst. Mm, yeah, I, I just, I apparently I was just, it got to the point where I was too good at the game, so it just, it made it unfun to play with me. So I was like, cool. Mm, Which a is problem a problem with, with fighting. fighting. Yeah. But I play, I played the single player a few times through because I still enjoyed myself with the game. And it, great soundtrack. You guys may have heard it on the stream in the past because I used to play it a lot. I actually bought the whole soundtrack on Amazon and then started playing it on stream after I bought it, you know, so I could support them. But it is what it is. I'll, I still I still do want to use the end credits song for the end of the streams. I still really do want to. I feel like it sh- this so shouldn't weird. sour. I feel like it yeah. shouldn't sour because he, he wasn't... He didn't produce the, the, the music. He wasn't really involved in that. He just he gave it the go-ahead, I guess. Well, you carry the torch, son. Be the change you want to see in the world. Make it acceptable <laughs> to listen to Jazz Lounge again. Jazz Lounge. We, sh- we need more Jazz Lounge in the world, you know? It's not enough. We actually do. That is very true. But yeah, that was a story about abuse. But do you know where else we've got stories about abuse? The one company we love to rag on all the time. You know who it is. World's West website. It's twitch.tv. That's right. Oh, yes. Terrible website. Purple, purple site bad. Purple site so bad. <laughs> purple site so bad that it was bad even before it was purple site. This goes all the way back to Justin TV. Yeah, I was going to say purple sus. <laughs> oh, purple sus. Sure but uh, yeah, so... PC Gamer did a whole article on the alleged long history of sexism and racism at the company, which, again, went back to Justin.tv. Surprise, surprise. I feel like no one is surprised that Twitch, of all people, is full of sexism and racism. What a surprise. Mm. Mm, here to suck it. I just... I love how this PC Gamer article frames it by basically starting with, so Twitch has been banning loads of people for sexual misconduct and abuse. Let's, let's, let's look into that a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I mean, yeah. it's not great. It's, it's well, horrible that it's, it's everywhere. It's... it. I feel like it's so much more prominent with stream streamers and stuff as well. Maybe it's... I don't know what it is. Is it because they're more connected to the audience? I don't know what it is, but they're just... What is wrong with streamers? What are, what's wrong with you all? I think it's just gamers. I think it's the fact that it gives gamers an easy platform. And so many gamers are sexist, unfortunately. It's a big problem in the whole scene. A, mm. a, lot, of, a lot of men can't handle women being involved in games, and I don't really get why. Oh, you're a gamer named 10 Games. <laughs> you're a real gamer. <laughs> Final Fantasy fan name uh, 25 mainline Final Fantasy games. <laughs> bet you want to look like My Little Pony. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're a new player. Yeah. Bath Rock Party. On the game. Uh, but it's it's no surprise. I mean, I I saw even more allegations on Twitter than, like the other day from Rooster Teeth apparently. One of, like, one of the people who work in the one of the gamers over there had a situation exactly like this. And I think it was through a Twitch stream. Surprise, surprise. So, uh. it's... It's just been something that... I feel like Twitch has turned a blind eye to for a long, long time. I mean, it's spre- it's even in their own management. They've actually gotten rid of people from staff who have been doing this. There was a big one... A f- like a couple of months back. I think there was a few actually that got taken off. I don't remember the names, but this is something that wouldn't surprise me if there's still more among the staff that got involved in stuff like this. I mean, let's not forget TwitchCon. TwitchCon, which is just a place where streamers go to hook up 
I'm pretty sure, because there's no one else to do at TwitchCon, because TwitchCon is just a... All people do there is they meet up with other streamers or, or fans, because I, I think they've got panels. They don't really have anything to do there. They have the last day of TwitchCon is a big party, and you can... Yeah, so to buy... It's a separate ticket as well. The first two days, you can get, and then if you want to pay extra, you can go to the third day, which is the party. And last oh, year... No. Well, last year I believe they had um they had a bar with open open drinks on the bar. Oh no way! Oh, and oh, guess what happened? Just... Guess what oh, happened, this... Seth? Take a guess. Oh. I wonder what happened to some of those drinks that were just there. I suspect some very shady Twitch streamers were dropping a few a few extra things in the drinks. It turns out a few few of the girls at the party had reports of, you know, apparently they just, they only had one drink and they, somehow they did, ended up somewhere and didn't know, didn't really know why. Hmm. Oh, for God's sake. I don't know how they messed that up. I don't know how they somehow are like, hey, let's throw those out in the middle of a big party. Does Twitch organize TwitchCon? Yeah, they do. That's kind of proof in and of itself of the of the the attitude that they've got, isn't it? The yeah. fact that they they think that party is a good idea when this is the only thing that can come from it, and like you've got that, and you there will be plenty of streamers out there because this is a problem with all internet influencers that you need to be wary of if you're a company that um, hosts them. Is there are people who take advantage of the fact that they've got a young young following so that they can have sex with with young people. And potentially underage people, it happens all the time. And how yeah. is Twitch not putting any place to stop that? In fact, they are encouraging it by putting that event in place. I, I'm speechless. From what I understand, some there's you know talk of you know Twitch staff that also hook up with stream as well. They're there as well. That's oh, a thing. Bet. There's a lot apparently of rumors about stuff to, like that. Apparently, they refer to uh, gaming girl streamers as boob streamers um, internally in Twitch, so I'm not surprised one bit. <laughs> oh yeah, that's how people refer to them on Twitch as well. <laughs> Just There's a lot of streamers that will refer to them as booby streamers. Like, oh, even boring. even female streamers that I've spoken to refer to them that way, and look at, like, because even if they're, like, you know, obviously showing themselves off a little bit to get more attention, a lot of people, they get a lot of flack for that, even from other female streamers, which I don't get that, like... Mm. I feel like there should be some mutual respect there, because you're both this, you're the same gender on the platform. You should maybe be trying to help each other out here, you know, when it's it's a tough territory to be in as it is. I feel like the problem yeah. with Twitch is the main, the main way people grow on Twitch is they do it by taking advantage of other streams and other streamers and... Mm. It, I don't know if this is an odd way of phrasing it, but I feel like, especially in small streams, they tend to go in to other small streams, build themselves up in that community, and then move them over to their stream. And that's a big stretch. They all they'll like donate or sub and like get that streamer's attention and be like, like, be like, hey, we're friends now. Friends, you know. I feel like I've seen that a lot on Twitch. As a lot of people who talk about stuff like that. Are you telling me, Sam, that I could start a Twitch account tomorrow <laughs> and, and just be like, hey, guys, you know me from Zanrise. Uh, do you want to come hang out? Interesting. You could. You could potentially do that. You know, if... I mean... <laughs> but that's, that's, that's how Twitch works. I feel like, essentially, a lot of people just take advantage of people, and that's how they build up. And... Surprise, surprise. Apparently, it happens at parties as well. Apparently, they just continue that behavior in real life as well. I just... It's... Twitch bad. <laughs> I don't Twitch know how... So else, I don't know how else to put it. The the party thing that they did last year was just done. They have this party every year, by the way. They do this all the time. This is just like a main event thing. It's... I, I think this has been going on since, like... I mean, there's always po events of parties, you know, but it, the, there's, like, exclusive events that different companies run when there's events going on, usually. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think a party is one thing. The way you're framing it, you're making it sound like there's an exclusive uh, after. It's essentially after the con because yeah. it's its own ticket. Uh, there's a separate piss up <laughs> is how you're framing it, which is not normal for a convention if that's how it's done. It's part it's of the convention. It's party. it's day three. Day three is the, the drink, the drink time. It's not really day three though that's what i'm saying but you, you pay like, you pay for the ticket, ticket you pay day three you pay for day three yeah. though tev but if, if it's separate, <laughs> if it's a separate ticket from day one and two then it's not part of the convention you're paying to go to like a, a piss up afterwards mm. and that's like oh, i don't know that's just that feels really weird so how this is like the reasoning a lot of people go to this is because the parties are good for networking that's the whole mm. reason people go to twitchcon networking or or hooking up essentially from what i from what i hear through you know well, through the grapevine <laughs> well, my understanding and to be fair i've never been to anything like this so maybe i'm wrong but my my understanding is usually at these uh professional conventions which are designed for marketing they'll mm. have some drinks and they might have them sort of in the evening later on or they might have them throughout the day but they don't sort of have a very like a specific this is going to be a party day because that sounds like they're kind of encouraging people to get really drunk which is weird it's not the point of it because it's not one of those parties yeah. if it's a real networking party they might have an open bar that a lot of them do but they, they are not really meant to get drunk because you would make a show of yourself in front of professionals so the way you're describing it, this doesn't sound like it's supposed to be a professional get together at all. This sounds like a piss up, which is a different thing entirely and is encouraging roofies. <laughs> so yeah, I would. I don't know. I'd love to talk to someone that actually has been to a TwitchCon, but this is my understanding from what I've seen. Like they do, they have like how it works is they have like a an area for partners, and then all the peasants get the rest of the convention to themselves. I don't know if they have like. I don't even know if they have a lot of game devs come in for it and show off games and stuff like you would at a normal convention. I don't know what they do at TwitchCon. Someone needs to tell me. Give me a reason. To, <laughs> like, why why, why do I go to TwitchCon? Why would I care? The other TwitchCon they were actually going to do, they were going to do a, a, a TwitchCon in Europe. Can you guess where in, in Europe they were going to do the, the other TwitchCon? I don't need to because I'm on a website right now. Of okay. course, it's in Amsterdam. Yeah. <laughs> Which, hmm, I wonder why that Party is. Party capital of Europe. Hmm. It's, it's almost like they just. It's almost like they just want a party. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it. It's this is just a massive issue with Twitch and Twitch culture in general, and this is something they've built up. A lot of streamers have built up their audience off sexism or something along those lines. And they've like they've gotten to the point now where they're like, oh, okay, this is wrong. Well, let's start like calling these people, and getting them away from our a mar group. But a lot of people did build off stuff like this, and I don't know. I again, I've not been to a TwitchCon, so I can't really say. But Twitch have always been super shady when it comes to stuff like this, and it wouldn't surprise me if there's more among the staff. I'm never getting a Twitch partnership. They're never letting me. <laughs> I mean, they're sleazy. It's just, it, they just are. You can you can see that in, in the way that they're acting. Something about the way the TwitchCon website is even written just oozes sexist sleaze to me. Uh, you can <laughs> Wait, actually parts? see that it's kind of in the whole... Um, you can see that it's just in the whole culture. Well, it was kind of, um, it does, you know, it does give me the impression that it's just a party. I, I feel like I'm signing up to a festival, not like a convention. It doesn't feel like, say, you're going to PAX or something because they're not even really pushing, the, they're not pushing any games or even any streamers. It's, it's weird, actually. I see what you mean where it's not clear what it's about because they don't push anything in particular. They're just like, it's TwitchCon. You like Twitch? Come here. And um, all they can really all they can really advertise is meet Twitch people and hang out in Amsterdam. It's like, this just sounds like a party. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. It's knowing that knowing especially what we know now about the things that they say behind closed doors it does just feel really sleazy yeah anyway it, we're kind of running out of time Should we, we, we are we're 
Oh god, we are like way over time. Sorry, we just had to rag on Twitch for a while there. Again, Twitch bad. Twitch will never give me partnership because I will just constantly call them out for just being the worst, the worst streaming platform out there. <laughs> Switch back. YouTube, YouTube, Swift, flick that switch, YouTube, <laughs> any day now. So, um, the next one you put down was about uh, Joke on Drift. I'm surprised you've not spoken about this before on the podcast, actually, because this is like a constant. It is a issue. constant thing, yeah. Um, yeah. So, it's been in the news again because another person has sued them. Not the first, won't be the last. There's been plenty of lawsuits about the Joy Con drifting. Um, if you're not aware, if you don't have um, a, a Switch, the Joy Cons, you know, the standard controllers that you get with the Switch, they have a really, really common problem with uh, drifting where they'll just start to move in one direction on their own. Um, it's not a case of when it's an actual defect. It's a case of, it's it's not a case of if, sorry, it is a case of when it will happen to you. It's just a defect in the design. It will happen at some point or another. Um, mine started doing it after about nine, 10 months. Like mine were pretty quick. Some people get them quicker. Some people haven't got them yet, but there's a theory that it is going to happen to every single Joy-Con at some point. Um, it's just it's a defect the contacts actually get worn down over time um and they're also really susceptible to dirt so dirt can cause it as well uh and someone has been uh suing them for it. a a child under 11 an eight-year-old kid so a mom is suing nintendo because her eight-year-old is it the mom or the dad switch. i thought, is it, I thought i read dad maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm wrong no it's yeah it's mom it's okay his mom i misread <laughs> Yeah, so um, I mean that's that's not the first time. Um, did we mention that F France has been? I don't, I don't think I have mentioned this to you. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. We probably should have mentioned this on a podcast because this was in the news a couple of weeks ago. Um, the French government have been looking into it because under French law, um, it's an intentional defect as far as um, no. French law is concerned because um. Because, you know, obviously, when they released the Switch the first time um, with the standard Switch, it, it was a problem and everyone was aware of it. Um, they then went and made the Switch light and didn't fix the problem. And under French law, if you're aware of the problem and don't fix it in a revision, it's now intentional because you knew about it and made the decision to not fix it. And I, I mean, I'm with the French. For, one, for once, yeah. I'm with the French. I mean, uh -huh. very rare. Most British people, we don't usually use <laughs> yeah. the French. But, uh, like, yeah, they, they are spot on. And I think that's especially true with the Switch Lite because you can't replace the Joy-Cons on a Switch Lite. So it's it's so much more important. And they still didn't fix the problem. Um, my, Mine did do it. Um, Mine got dirt in them. To be fair, I wasn't storing my controllers very well um, for a short while. I was keeping them in a very dusty location, and I think dust got to them. Um, pretty easily. I I don't I haven't mentioned this to you, but I actually um I did take apart my Joy-Con. Well, you clean. I actually saw. I, I think you to. tweeted out that you cleaned it. I did. I did. I did have to clean my Joy Cons. Um, luckily there's just like a little sort of um skirt, like a rubber skirt along the the bottom of the stick that you just like lift up, lift up the skirt way, and you can just like spray some contact. Right, that's not good after the Switch there. conversation we just had. Hey, don't don't be um touching up Switch Joy Cons, kids. Ask for consent first. I did ask for consent. My Joy-Con was okay with it, and I blew a little bit of Very air good. into the contacts down there. And um, it, it's it's fine now. That did fix it. To be fair, that did fix mm. it. Um, my Pro Controller was doing it too. Interestingly, they're not. It's meant bizarre. To the the Pro Controller's doing it. Mm -hmm. That is far less common. Um, I think that was probably that's why I think this could be my fault because almost all controllers will drift if you keep them in a really dusty place and i was literally keeping them on the floor for a while in this flat it's my fault um they were just getting shoved on the floor next to the console they're in a drawer now so they probably will be fine now but i had to actually had to unscrew and take apart the, the um the pro controller to get into the, the gubbins properly and clean it up and it's it's absolutely fine now they're both great now they're both fine um, so that that's good with with the Joy-Con. It was just dirt. I got lucky. Um, but apparently, if uh, what people are saying is true, eventually it will start drifting, and it'll be because the contacts have worn down. And at that point, I need to get it replaced by Nintendo, and I need to pay Nintendo to do that, which I, I shouldn't be paying them. I should not be no. paying them. Um, in in some countries now, because of these lawsuits, in some countries they'll do it for free because they've been forced to. But otherwise, you've got to pay, um, and it's not cheap. It's like 
40, 50 pounds to get them repaired, which is like more than half the price of just replacing them. Um, I feel like under law over here, we, we should be able to get that. I'm, mm, I, yeah, I'm, I, th I think the, the thing is, I think in most countries, it's probably there in law. But until someone sues them and creates a case law for everyone else to follow, um, Nintendo won't feel that they have to have to comply with it. Has anyone sued them in the UK? Country? Yeah. Do you want to sue Nintendo? You up for it? I cannot keep track. <laughs> you down? You give it a go. Why not? Make a little Why bit. Not? Make a little bit, Bob. Or or just get your your Joy Cons fixed for free at least. Oh yeah. <laughs> just settle on that. <laughs> Uh, to be fair, some people have like taken them to small claims and just been like, sort my Joy Cons. And then instead of been like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure, why not? That's easy. But... We should be paying for it when it's a known defect. No, we really shouldn't. But, uh, I mean, we'll see what happens. You know, maybe eventually everywhere it will be free, or, you know, maybe they'll just fix it. They'll probably have a new console by the time. By the time they're like, oh yeah, we fixed it. Probably will. They'll um they they won't do it unless they, they really get forced to. It's so anti consumer, but that's classic Nintendo really, isn't it? Mm. It's a shame because Nintendo do a lot of good stuff as well. They've been yeah. they do a lot of good stuff and then they do stuff like this, and it's like, oh mm. I feel I feel like Nintendo are so, so good at making games. Are not very good at pretty much everything else. They used to be really good at making consoles. I'm not even entirely sure that's true anymore. The, the Switch is good in some ways, but it's awful in other ways. Um, I feel, uh, what I will say is they're more innovative than every other game company. They do something different with their console every time. It okay, feels they, like yeah, yeah. they they yeah, do they bizarre do. things and they try and they try and make it interesting, which I can appreciate. Yeah. I don't appreciate the drift. That wasn't that wasn't one that I wanted. They no, could remove cool if they can remove that innovation. <laughs> but uh, they do do a lot of cool things. To be fair to them. Yeah, speaking of cool things, let's talk about a real cool game by oh, the my name favorite game by the name of Crucible. Does that, anyone remember Crucible? <laughs> did, did anyone play Crucible? <laughs> so Crucible, for those of you who don't know, it uh, was like a game that came out that Amazon made. It then went. Back into beta, because uh, well, actually no. Before that, let's 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 preface this first. They reduced the amount of game modes in there to just one, so they could focus on the one game mode. You know, it was just to focus on it, no other reason. And uh, mm. then all of a sudden, they were like, you know what? We're gonna take this back to beta. We're we're gonna work on this a bit more. We'll re-release re it in the future. And um, now we've come to the final stage of griefing, where they've cancelled the game. <laughs> <laughs> the game's cancelled. It's 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 gone. They've done. They've just like, Jeff was like, listen, I've had enough of this. No, <laughs> no more. You crucible. Get that out of here. No one needs this. But yeah, I so mean, that's no one was interested at all. No, in crucible. No one. I mean, if they did actually come back out and do something really cool with it after taking it back into beta, who knows? Maybe I would have been interested. But it's too much of a saturated market, though. Yeah, I mean, they could have completely changed the game up. They could have, but they just gave up on it. They're just like, meh, too much for me. <laughs> this poor game. I think, I think, I believe over the course of the podcast, uh, we've seen the, every stage of this, like the rise and fall. I'm sure we it have. came, because it came out in, in like, it came out 20th of May, apparently. I'm sure, I'm sure we were on the podcast at that point. We, we were. It, but, I remember um, talking about it reducing itself to one game mode. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I do specifically remember talking about it unreleasing because that was just so funny. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's been a weird year for Chris Paul. Um, Ziff has a uh, interesting theory about this, which I, I think he's probably right. Um, so he said once the New World beta came out and every. And Amazon saw how happy everyone was with that and how hyped people were for that game. They probably just thought, is it worth carrying on with Crucible? Because there is zero hype for Crucible and loads of hype for New World. So maybe they're just taking those devs and putting them on New World so that they can get New World better polished before it comes out. Yeah, they could They could be. I think I think New World, again, is going to do really well. I think that everyone was really hyped for that. I, the problem with Crucible was it came out of nowhere with no buzz 
Mm. No one was talking about Crucible, and then it was like, oh, this game's... Should we try this game? People tried it for, like, a few days. It was like, okay, this feels like a very soulless... Soulless, uh... Shooter. Third-person shooter. Sure, we'll, uh... We'll not play that. I don't... I don't know. I guess... It, it honestly just makes sense at this point because no one was playing it anyway. It released to no fanfare. They had to unrelease it. And then... And then they were like, what do we even do with this game? <laughs> I imagine they were just sitting around for a couple of months looking at it being like, do we make it into a battle royale? Um, crafting mechanics, maybe? Should we make mm. it a survival game? <laughs> it does make you wonder what they were doing for those few months. I think they were they were probably just like, what do we do with it? <laughs> yeah, I bet you they, you're probably right. They were probably sat at the drawing board for like three months just going... And then eventually someone's just like, I've got nothing! Bid it! <laughs> just take the whole draw and we'll just throw it out the window. Because the problem is, like, while they were doing that, more games have came out, and if we recall, Hyperscape also came out as well. And that yes. was... And Hyperscape didn't do very well. And we've had them being like, oh, we're going to make some big changes to Hyperscape. So, I mean, who knows what's going to happen with Hyperscape. Hyperscape's in a super similar situation. I honestly mm. get the two games mixed up quite often. Um, they, they are they they are both so soulless, and it's so funny how their story has been so similar. They just there's there's just no effort put into these games. They just it's just a quick cash grab, and I think they're finding that it's a far more crowded market than they thought. And you've got to pull people away from like Fortnite and Overwatch and all, all games which are fully entrenched in people's minds and it's not as easy as these guys these guys seem to think it is they seem to think that they can just throw together a cheap crappy game and people will flood to it which i know does work in some markets with games but hey if you throw an MMO like people are fo foaming at the mouth for a new MMO <laughs> been playing well for the last <laughs> the last 15 years they're like save me please <laughs> That market is desperate for, for a new game to overhaul the entire genre. That is a totally different situation. We're not quite at that point with shooters yet. I think people are pretty happy with, with where they are with shooters, and no one feels like a new game is necessary. You'd really have to pull something really incredible out of the bag, really different, I think. You can't just pull, do the same thing again. No one wants that. Whereas yeah, yeah, with MMOs, the world is, is, a, is a good call. As much as people were like, why are they making an MMO? It is a good call because people will take any new MMO. Yeah, like, I mean, shooters, are, they've been like the popular thing for the longest time. And I feel like right now they are, they, they are like the big hots. They're the thing that everyone wants to be playing. You know, you've got people call it playing Call of Duty. You got people playing Fortnite. You got Apex is still actually around. People still play Apex. And then you've also got uh Valorant. Valorant as well was a massive one that came out and was holding a fair amount of people, so it's people hard to nicely, It's hard to break into that market now. Like Rogue Company came along and Rogue Company's been doing okay as well, surprisingly. It's had a lot of back and but I don't again I don't think you can get into that. You'd have to do something big or have You'd have to pay a lot of streamers, a lot of influencers to influence that game, influence people into buying your game, as as they say. But yeah. Do they say that? Okay. Well, that's the idea. That's why the influencers. Yeah. Gotta say, yeah, gotta just say it in the most just ugh, way. Sends a shiver down my spine. But yeah, that that's. If for the news this week, anyway, we did go a little bit over time, but that's okay. We needed to rag on Twitch and uh, EA. That needed to happen. I, mm, I might rag on Twitch again next week. I'll just come up with an excuse oh, for it. Anything will do. do. Anyway, this yeah. week I've been playing Twitch and I hate it. <laughs> it's the worst game I've ever played. <laughs> oh, I could have talked about Twitch soundtrack. I don't think I've mentioned that one, but we'll, you know, I'll save that one for next week. I'll bring that one up so we can wow. rack on them. Excellent. <laughs> All right, so let's wrap it up for the night. Tef, where can the people find you? Where can they go? Where do you exist? Oh. I guess I'm on Twitter. I don't think I've actually really, I've not really been tweeting, but I'm on Twitter. I'm Tefers. 
whack that in there. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'll try that again. <laughs> try that again. One more time. One more time. There we go. So I said dot com slash Twitter. not Twitter. Twitter. Oh, fuck me. All right. I'm on Twitter anyway. He's losing it. I am losing it. I'm Teffers on Twitter. Um, I also write articles on Medium. Um, I haven't done one in a while. I'm kind of, I've not really got any ideas at the moment. I've been too busy playing Silent Hill and Among Us. Um, but yeah, when I do write them, there are always uh, latest articles always pinned on Twitter. And you can find more articles through there. All right. Well, if you don't know me already, which you probably do if you're over here, I'm Zamraz on Twitch, I'm Zamraz on YouTube, Zang Games on the Twitter, the real Zamraz on Instagram. Also, if you want to listen to the audio version of this podcast, you can find us over on Spotify or iTunes. And oh, yeah. we're also going to be on YouTube soon. I have a channel that is set up, so if you search this podcast is all for on YouTube, you should be able to find the podcast channel. I do have all 20 of the past ones uploaded. But as it turns out, when you upload 20 videos to YouTube at once, YouTube doesn't really like it. So, I've got them all in there, but some of them are, like, perpetually processing through YouTube, so... I have a lot of the episodes processed, but some of them are just still processing, so... They will all come out. If you want to go over to YouTube, you can find them all over there, hopefully. But, I mean, by the time this one's uploaded, they should all be up and running, hopefully. But yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out. We will be back again next week.